Hello and welcome to the introduction to HTML. So let's start this section understanding about HTML. So let's look at what is the section objective on what you'll be learning after completing this section. Well, you will learn what is HTML, what is the full form of HTML and how the HTML is used in the websites. Then you'll learn how to write HTML pages and understand its structure. Then you'll create something called as HTML boilerplate template. This is basically a template, a starting point and we'll define how to create those boilerplates and reuse for all our websites. Then we'll understand how to write HTML pages using the headings, paragraphs, comments, horizontal line, line breaks, text formatting using strong emphasis, underline italics. Then we'll use some of the HTML tags like pre code list links, article tags with exercises. So we're going to do a lot of exercises and also we're going to create web pages using all these tags. And we'll understand how a web page is built using HTML tags. Okay, so let's start our topic now. Welcome to HTML basics. So let's understand what is HTML. So HTML stands for hypertext markup language. So what is hypertext? Hypertext is basically all the images, videos, text, and all those data that is being transferred over the web is called as hypertext. Okay, and what is a markup language? Well, markup is a language using which you mark the contents. You mark the purpose of that content using the markup language. So we'll understand how the HTML is written and what markups are there in the HTML. Okay. But for the full form of the HTML, HTML stands for hypertext markup language. So in order to mark your hypertext, you use the markup language. So let's understand what is the purpose of HTML. Well, HTML is used to describe the structure of the web page. So if you look at the websites, all the structure like you have a heading, you have a paragraph, you have subheadings, then you have a footer, then you have a header. All the structures is being defined using HTML. Okay. So the purpose of HTML when you write HTML is basically you are describing the structure of the web page. And HTML is used to describe how the content should be displayed on the web browser. So when you're developing a website, HTML will give you some tags using which you can describe how those contents should be displayed onto the web page. So that's the purpose of the HTML. Well, we have met these two gentlemen, Jim from USA and Bob in Australia in the web basic section. If you haven't covered that web basic section and jump directly to HTML section, then what we covered in that web basics, we talked about Jim staying in USA and he's a buyer and is thinking to buy a phone for a cheaper price. Bob in Australia, he want to sell a phone for a cheaper price and he want to sell a phone, right? So Jim being the buyer and Bob being the seller, they want to exchange information. So we discussed about all those things in the web basics. So if you want to understand more about what we discussed, you can go back to web basics topic. So let's understand how an information can be exchanged between Jim and the Bob and how HTML basically help us to do that. So in that context, we'll understand what is the purpose of the HTML and what role does it play? Okay. So. We have discussed about client side and the server side. Let's do a quick review. Client side is basically Jim opening up a browser and typing bob.com. Then the request is sent to the bob.com to fetch the data. Bob.com receives that request, send the response with the data to the browser. Right. And one who is initiating the request is called as requester. And one who is responding the request is called as provider. And provider basically is called as server side, which actually have all the hypertext which has the images video music files and text everything is available at the server side and from the client side you initiate the request to fetch those details from the server let's understand what is the purpose of the html what is that job that html does in the client server technology so imagine the situation wherein browser is trying to send a request and server is sending the response the first thing that happens is bob will type a url Right, it will type saying that page.html. This is what I want from the bob.com. And this request is sent to bob.com. The bob.com basically have a HTML page. Okay. This is where you will write your HTML page and call it as a page.html. That is the extension of the HTML page. And in this page, you will link all the resources on the server. Okay. And once this page is written and it linked to all its resources that page is sent back from the server to the client. And what is written inside the HTML page? The HTML page is basically connecting all the resources on the 
system and it is displaying the data on to the browser okay html is used to describe the content on the browser remember the definition of html so if you want to show any of the hypertext content sitting inside the server you write an html page and you link all those resources in the html page and then anybody request for that html page that html page is sent back as a response to the browser and browser has the capability to display that html code into the browser okay so when we write and run an html page we'll try to understand how the content has been displayed onto the web browser okay but from here you have to understand the purpose of the html is to embed all the resources from the server and second purpose is to display the content onto the web browser so in short the main purpose of html is to embed the resource on the server the resources could be video image text data anything that is sitting on the server you want to display that onto the client machine onto the browser when you create something called as html page and you write html code in it and that code can be used to display the content from the server onto the client machine well html uses something called as markup language and you can use the markup language to mark the content on the page for an example you want to display an image you mark that image as an image into using the markup language and you say oh here i want to display an image if you want to display a video from a server you basically mark that up into the html page say oh at this point you should be displaying a video okay so all the things that you're doing in html is basically you're trying to mark up the content on the page okay that's all you're doing in the html page and how the markup looks like let me show you an example so this is a markup if you want to display a paragraph right you want to write a paragraph of text you mark it up with something called as markup a markup looks like you have a less than symbol greater than symbol then you have a tag name that's basically the name of the markup then there is a starting point and an ending point the starting point will have less than greater than and then the name of the tag and the ending tag will have the forward slash that's nothing but the slash okay so this is a starting point this is an ending point and anything inside is you are marking it up you are marking up and saying this is a paragraph okay instead of that you can even mark up an image you can mark up a video you can mark up an heading and then say this is basically an heading well this is the instruction that is given in the html file so when the web browser reads this instruction it knows how it need to print those data onto the web browser so html is really marking up the content and telling the browser how do you display this data onto the browser so let's take an example on the right hand side on the server you have these files like page.html dog1.jpg and dog.mpg you have a video you have a image and then you have a html file so all the things that you do in html code is you will write markup language you will mark all the contents onto the server okay if you want to display an image you will use an image tag if you want to display a video you will use a video tag so you are basically telling the browser okay this is the image in the path is here please print it this is the video the path is here please print it so that's the job of an html you are marking up the contents and those contents are sitting somewhere in the server okay it is embedding all the resources in the internet if you want to link pages like one page to another again in html code you will say okay now when someone click this please go there well that's the power of the html okay and when html is displayed in the browser it reads all this html code and it say oh now you are asking me to print an heading so i will increase the font and make it more bigger so that anybody can see the heading and then it says okay you want me to display an image let me display an image and where is the resource the resource is going back to the server and say the file is somewhere here then you want to display a video then the again the path to the video is been given okay then you see there is a footer and then there is basically some paragraphs in it so try to realize this that html code is a markup language you are marking up the content and describing the structure of the web page and where do you display the html page you display the html page on the browser and browser understands the html code and try to display the markup language that has been written to display the content on the web browser what are the markup language how they should write it this is what we learn in this section all right so let's do a quick summary of what is html html is a markup language you use markup to mark the content on the web page markups are used in html page to mark the contents 
HTML is used to describe how the content should be displayed on the browser. That's the purpose of the HTML. It is an instruction to the browser to say display the content like this. That's all is HTML all about. One of the most powerful thing about HTML that HTML page helps to link all the resources on the server. So if you have to connect all the files around the internet, you can do it via the HTML. HTML has that power that it can connect any resources sitting under any server which is publicly available to access. You can mark those things inside the HTML. Okay, it's really connecting things together in the internet. That's the power of HTML. And how does all these things happen? The client browser sends the request to access that HTML page. Remember, HTML page is sitting at the server, right? And someone has to initiate that request. So client browser send the request to access that HTML page. Then server sends that HTML page to the client browser. Then the client browser understand that markup and display that content onto the web browser. Okay, that's how the whole HTML scenario works. And that's how all the resources on the server is accessed by the client via using this client server technology. Okay, and understand what is HTML? HTML is a markup language which is used to describe the content onto the web browser. Well, that's all about what is HTML. Let's build some HTML pages and understand in detail. Hello and welcome to the lecture. Let's understand what is tag, element and attribute. Let's understand what are these words called as tag, element and attribute. Okay, tags look something like this. You have a less than symbol. Then you have the name of the tag. Then you have greater than symbol. Then you have a closing tag which is called as less than forward slash and same name that you used it here. Okay, and then you have some content inside it. So the starting tag is called as starting tag. You can say starting tag, right? And the ending tag is nothing but the ending tag. The one that is end with a slash forward slash is called as ending tag. You can also call it as starting tag as an opening tag. And obviously ending tag can be called as closing tag. So that's basically the definition of tag. So when someone say tag, you should think of opening tag or a closing tag or starting tag or an ending tag. Let's look at what is element. The whole thing from starting tag till the ending tag, including the content is called as element. Okay. So when somebody says element, they are referring to starting tag, ending tag and the text as well. Okay. An example of an element could be a paragraph tag where it is denoted with P less than P and greater than. Then you have text inside it. Then you have less than forward slash P and greater than. So everything in starting tag and the ending tag and the text is called as element. So how do you read this? You say this is a paragraph element and you can write text inside this tag. Okay. You can switch over between tag and an element. So you can even say starting tag and the ending tag and then you can even say it's an element. Okay. So that's basically the difference between tag and an element. Okay. Element is the complete thing. Tag is just the opening tag and the closing tag. Okay. Let's look at what is empty tag. When you don't have a data from a starting and a closing, then you call it as an empty tag. Empty tag is also called as self closing tag. You also have tags where you don't have to mention content. If you see this example, less than tag forward slash and greater than you don't have a starting tag. You only have the ending tag. And here you have starting tag and an ending tag, but you don't have a data inside it. These two examples are called as empty element, which means you don't have a data in it. If you want to add a new line that is denoted with BR element and it is denoted like less than BR forward slash and greater than you don't mention any data in it and it is called as an empty element. Okay, so that's how you basically read an empty element. Let's understand what is an attribute. Every element or every tag that you have can have additional properties. Ta attributes can also be called as properties. Properties means additional information about that element. If you have a tag and you want to mention some additional properties of that tag, you can give a name is equal to open quotes, value and the closing quotes. Okay. You can mention the name and the value defined in the specification. You cannot write whatever you want. You have to follow the specification of HTML and use them. Okay. An example 
if you're writing a link or a hyperlink you have to mention where when someone clicks this text where that data has to go what is the url location and what is the text that should be displayed on the browser so visitors is displayed and this will be linked when someone click the visitors they have to go to this location so in this whole element href is nothing but an attribute okay take one more example i'm just using an example as a dog but dog is not a tag in html but i'm just giving an example to understand the concept of attribute and if a dog element has something called as color attribute and color value is brown and the value of that dog is german shepherd how you are reading and understanding this dog element has a color attribute and color is the attribute of the dog element that's how you basically read it okay you i'm trying to tell you how do you read this attributes Okay, so dog element has a color attribute, and then a href is basically an attribute of anchor tag. A tag is also called as anchor tag. Okay, and you can also say color is the attribute of dog element. So okay, this is how you read an attribute. So let's do a quick summary of what we have learned. So this is the perfect example. Again, name is not an HTML tag. I'm just giving you a definition of tag element and attribute. So name here is basically called as opening tag. the name here is called as closing tag an attribute is called as class and that class has some value and the name is basically saying some person name and from starting tag to ending tag or opening tag to closing tag is called as element here you are trying to define a real time example you are trying to define a name a person name as john smith and also you are adding some properties to it and you are saying john smith is in second class okay so if you have to define this you write something like this so you open and close with the opening and the closing tag you define some attributes to tell more about that person element is nothing but the opening and the closing tag okay so this is the definition of tag element and attribute okay so when we read and write about html we will be using this language i'll be saying tag i'll be saying element i'll be using paragraph element header element you know h1 tag or you know i'll be saying the attribute of this h1 tag could be this so don't get confused try to understand this language this is a new language you are learning and try to use these words when you try to define html okay so that's all in this lecture of tag element and attribute and i'll see you in the next one